Imagine owning your own kingdom, a private island where you reign supreme, far from the hassles of everyday life. It's not just a villainess fantasy, it's a reality for those with deep pockets and a taste for exclusivity. While you don't need a fortune the size of Mount Everest to snag your own island, the big shots of the world like Richard Branson and Bill Gates are making waves with their luxurious island retreats. And today, we'll be looking at these fascinating dream places that only the billionaires can afford. With that said, let's get started. This trend isn't new. It goes back to the 60s when shipping tycoon Aristotle Onassis tied the knot with former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy on his Greek paradise, Scorpios. Nowadays, owning an island isn't just about showing off your wealth, it's about creating your own haven untouched by the chaos of the world. You wake up to the sound of waves gently lapping at your shores with nothing but pristine beaches and azure waters as far as the eye can see. But let's not sugarcoat it. Owning an island comes with its fair share of questions. Are these private paradises sustainable or are they just playgrounds for the ultra-rich? Critics argue that they highlight the growing gap between the wealthy elite and everyone else. And then there's the environmental impact. Developing these islands into opulent retreats can put a strain on fragile ecosystems, raising concerns about long-term sustainability. So why the obsession with islands? For starters, they offer unparalleled privacy and security, a sanctuary from the chaos of the outside world. In an era of political uncertainty and climate change, having your own island fortress can seem like a smart move. But it also raises ethical questions. Should a select few have the power to monopolize entire islands while the rest of the world grapples with pressing issues like climate change? Take Kanoan, for example. This Caribbean gem has been a hotspot for developers looking to create next ultra lux destination. But turning a tropical paradise into a playground for the rich and famous is not easy. It requires careful planning, sustainable practices, and a deep understanding of the local environment. Kanawan Island, located in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, has seen quite the journey from obscurity to luxury. It all started with an Italian businessman who got a little miffed about not being able to build his dream mansion in Mustique, a swanky Caribbean island. So he turned his sights to Kanawan, a nearby gem that was pretty much blank canvas back in the early 1990s. With his hefty banking fortune, he aimed to turn Kanawan into the ultimate playground for the ultra-rich, outshining even Mustique. The island's transformation was no small feat. From a rustic fishing community with no modern amenities to a hot spot for the elite, Kanawan underwent massive changes. The Italian visionary Antonio Saladino snagged a long lease on a chunk of the island and poured resources into making it a paradise for billionaires. Saladino's first attempts at glamorizing Kanawan didn't quite hit the mark. He tried to lure attention with a golf course and a casino, even roping Donald Trump for some glitz. But it wasn't until later, with new investors like Dermot Desmond, that Kanawan started to shine brighter. Desmond, known for his savvy and high-end resorts, saw the potential in Kanawan's natural beauty and yachting appeal. Together with Saladino and others, they revamped the island, adding a luxurious marina, top-notch resorts like the Mandarin Oriental, and enticing perks for mega-yacht owners. The island's allure lies in its exclusivity and tranquility, drawing in celebrities like George Clooney and Leonardo DiCaprio seeking privacy away from the paparazzi's lens. Kanawan's evolution hasn't been without its bumps, though. Disputes over development plans and deferring visions among investors have caused some friction. Despite the challenges, Kanawan remains an escape for the world's wealthiest, proving that even paradise can be a work in progress. Now, let's look at Ted Turner's St. Phillips Island in South Carolina. For over 35 years, it's been a playground for Turner and his crew. With its white sandy beaches and wildlife galore, it's like a nature lover's dream come true. Turner's even put it up for sale so someone else can make memories in this natural wonderland. Richard Branson's not one to keep all the fun to himself. Necker Island in the British Virgin Islands is his personal slice of paradise, open for a hefty price tag. But it's not just about luxury. Branson's big on sustainability and giving back to the local community. And if Necker Island is too crowded, there's always Mosquito Island nearby, where privacy comes with a hefty price tag of $47,300 a night. Celebrities and royalty mingle under the stars at one of Necker Island's famous end-of-the-world parties. People don elaborate costumes, adding a dash of whimsy to the luxurious setting. There's live music serenading the night, gourmet food tantalizing taste buds, and fireworks painting the sky with bursts of color. It's a party fit for a fantasy novel, only it's real. John C. Malone took a different route with Samson K at the Bahamas. Instead of opening it to the public, he turned it into his private Bahamian getaway. 
It's a billionaire's version of Keep Out, This Paradise is Mine. Scorpio's island in Greece holds a romantic history, hosting the wedding of Aristotle Onassis and Jacqueline Kennedy. Dmitry Rebolovlev's daughter snagged this gem, beating out a host of other big names. Aristotle Onassis turned Scorpios into a haven for opulent celebrations. The most iconic of these was his wedding to Jacqueline Kennedy, a legendary event that echoed through the decades as a pinnacle of social prestige. Sometimes being a billionaire means that you get to claim a piece of history as your own. Dietrich Mateschitz went all out with Lokala Island in Fiji, turning it into a luxury resort. From private villas to fine dining and water sports, it's a tropical playground for the rich and famous. Plus, each villa comes with its own buggy, because why walk when you can ride in style? On the other hand, Roman Abramovich's New Holland Island in St. Petersburg adds an urban twist to island living. It's an urban cultural hub with art, cafes, and even a hot air balloon launch pad. But in recent years, some of the world's richest people have been doing more than just lounging on private islands. They're turning these paradises into eco-wonderlands. Take Mark Zuckerberg, for instance. He's been making waves in Hawaii, not just with his land purchases, but also with his eco-moves, too. Sure, there's been some back and forth with the locals about land rights, but Zuck's not sitting pretty. He's teaming up with the Hawaiians to protect endangered birds and keep those native plants thriving. Sir Richard Branson is not one to be left out of the Green Party, either. Necker Island isn't just a hotspot for celebs. It's a haven for endangered critters like flamingos and lemurs. And if that's not enough, Brunson's also got his eye on helping local businesses grow sustainably through his Caribbean Centre for Entrepreneurs. And who can forget Ted Turner? St. Philip's Island is his canvas for conservation, where he's keeping the local critters safe and sound. Plus, he's got this fund that's all about saving species from the brink. But it's not just about land. They're saving the oceans too. Ernesto Bertarelli, the Swiss billionaire, is like Aquaman, working with NGOs to protect vast areas of Pacific and Indian oceans. And let's not forget Hansjörg Weiss, who's not only donating millions, but also has a plan to save 30% of the planet by 2030. It's not all about numbers and acres, though. Tumpkins wants to bring back the wildlife that's gone missing, like Andean condors and jaguars. But living on a private island is more to it than meets the eye. Imagine coordinating not just your own travel, but also the shipment of goods and services. Some islands have airstrips or helipads for the fancy flyers, while others rely on boats chugging back and forth like clockwork. Do you want year-round sunshine or a cooler climate? How far are you willing to be from civilization? And hey, does the local area serve some good tacos? Islands don't come cheap. You need to figure out how much you're willing to splash for paradise. Depending on where your island is, you might need to jump through some hoops, environmental rules, self-sufficiency plans. These all are just part of the island package. Unless your island is a stone's throw from Miami, you'll need to factor in transportation costs. It's not just about you, it's about getting everything and everyone to your slice of heaven. You can't just fish for your dinner every day. Island dwellers often blend imported goodies with homegrown treats. Hydroponic gardens sprout veggies and aquaculture tanks teeming with fresh fish. Moreover, powering up these paradises takes a mix of solar panels, wind turbines and backup generators. We're talking about harnessing nature's energy to keep those island vibes alive, from charging your gadgets to keeping the lights on during those starry nights. But health services can be a bit tricky. While some islands boast tiny clinics, serious staff might need a boat ride to the mainland. And let's not forget staying connected. Internet on an island? That's where satellite tech swoops in. Of course, maintaining this island's utopia is no walk on the beach. Buildings, utilities, and all the nitty-gritty need regular TLC. Plus, there's a whole legal and financial tango involved, from property taxes to navigating local laws. But when your bank account is flush with cash, people will flock to assist you in achieving your desires because nothing comes in between luxury and billionaires. And that's a wrap for now. If you like the idea of owning your slice of paradise, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exclusive insight into the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Until next time, dream big and live luxuriously.